This video is sponsored by Keeps. More on them later. So, Game Freak decided to release a new Pokemon game? Oh, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay. Well, instead of dwelling on that too much, how about instead we look back over the last quarter of a century worth of Pokemon games and see how they all stack up when compared to each other? Rather than talk about literally every Pokemon game, which is a hell of an undertaking and consists of literally hundreds of games, I'm feeling more comfortable focusing on each generation, and to be even more specific, it's the dual game releases that come out every three or so years. I did wonder if I should try to include everything from a generation, so like, Gen 7 would include Pokemon Go, and Gen 3 would include Colosseum and X but that's still a ton of games and I'd like to be done with this video before I turn 40 and lose all of my luscious hair. Fortunately, this video is sponsored by Keeps and their FDA approved treatment for hair loss is exactly what you need if you ever end up making a video that long and also if you're part of the two out of three guys who will experience some form of male pattern baldness before they turn 35. These guys are frankly geniuses when it comes to preventing hair loss and their treatment comes with years of experience and loads of successful cases under their belts. In fact, they're so smart that they know that hair loss is different from one guy to the next, which is why their treatment comes in three different variants depending on what kind of hair loss you're experiencing. Plus, you can get everything shipped directly to your door so you don't have to wait for the world to not be so terrible before you can fix your hair. Keeps' his treatment packages are already cheaper than their competitors, but with a deal they're running with me, you can save even more money. For a limited time offer, you can go to keeps.com forward slash rabbit or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Stop hair loss now before it's too late. Anyway, let's pokey some mons. Oh, that was bad. The first problem I have is that Game Freak, for all their issues and poor handling of such a massive franchise, I don't think they've been responsible for a truly atrocious generation of Pokemon. Don't get me wrong, not all of these were born equal, but even the worst of these games are pretty damn good experiences. My view is that Gen 7 dropped the ball the hardest, and that's understandable given that this was a very experimental time for Pokemon games, and Sun and Moon angled itself away from a lot of convention, like gym leaders and HMs, to carve its own path full of trials and regional Pokemon. I love a lot of the new ideas that this game has and can't fault it for its boldness, but the new stuff means that the first few hours are full of slow tutorials that waste my goddamn time. Once these games get going, there's a good story with interesting characters and Ultra Beasts are bananas, but also the Ultra sequels are comparatively a bit of a letdown that deflates the story and doesn't compensate anywhere else apart from Ultra Necrozma diddling on Nuzlocke runs. Most other generations I'd be excited to replay, but knowing that it takes hours to get going really lets Gen 7 down for me. And if this gen was characterized by a slow start and a gradual uptick in quality, Gen 6 is kind of the same all the way through, but not too amazing at any point. It's the first truly 3D generation for Pokemon, and at times it feels like Game Freak were happy with that being the primary reason to play X and Y. The one big upside of Mega Revolutions, which are often hilariously broken but fun to use, and gave some love to some Pokemon that really needed it. Also, it made already popular Pokemon even more coveted, and I'm sorry, but Charizard didn't need two Mega Revolutions, that's just silly. Apart from that, I end up feeling a bit numb towards Gen 6 and keep circling around some of the few gameplay eccentricities that I remember enough to enjoy. I suppose bringing Pokemon into 3D is worth noting, but at the same time, a lot of the 3D Pokemon models pale in comparison to what was, at the time, some pretty awesome sprite work. The story is too bonkers to take seriously, and a lot of the characters in here are one-note hollow shells that do nothing for me. Like, what is your name? Up until recently, I would have suggested that Gen 8 is comfortably the most controversial generation of Pokemon. Removing hundreds of Pokemon from the game was seen as blasphemic by a particularly loud portion of the fanbase, and it got so loud that I still have their special hashtag muted on Elon Musk's compensation project. Moving past that though, and Sword and Shield are graphically disappointing for Nintendo Switch games, but at the cost of having one of the most exciting new additions to a Pokemon game in the wild area. I shit you not that I spent the majority of my time here roaming around looking for Pokemon and trying not to get destroyed by Pokemon that were way stronger than me at the time, and I can honestly look past a lot of this game's issues that spread to the story and the characters and the trees and why is Zacian so strong, what the fuck? Because the wild area is wonderful. The openness of this one location highlights how Pokemon should be trying to do more of this wherever possible, and probably help to make all the other routes in the game seem super linear because damn, I can see it now. I think we all learned something here. 
I've probably been overly harsh to the first generation before. There are a lot of ways of looking at Gen 1 and some of them may well lead you to a wall of text that explains how and why these games are so fundamentally broken, but the way I see it, very few of these actually ruin the overall experience. Yeah, sure, psychic types are crazy powerful, but you just adapt to that and develop a strategy for not being cornered by a level 43 Alakazam. What this gen does so well, apart from being the foundation of future Pokemon games, is its roster of Pokemon, and hey, I know Seal is just a dyslexic seal, and Muck is pollution with eyes, but the iconic status of so much of this roster cannot be underestimated. The balance is terrible for the most part, and some of these Pokemon should never see the light of battle again, but they're just so lovable on their own that I can't hate anything that Gen 1 does. It's been remade twice and the glitches have been long since patched out, and it says a lot to the strength of the first generation that just a new coat of paint and some troubleshooting gives it so much new life. It really is that simple sometimes. My ooey gooey nostalgia fueled brain is telling me that I should ignore any and all dissenting opinions and place Gen 2 on its throne where it deserves to be because holy shit did this game do so much for me growing up. In general, I don't want to give over too much to nostalgia since I think most people's favourite generation is the one they grew up with, but I will say that looking back on Gen 2 specifically, it's aged a lot better than Gen 1 but still has a few pitfalls by virtue of being more than 20 years old at this point. It's surprisingly stingy with the new Pokemon and most gym leaders won't touch any new ones, but with new additions like Dark and Steel type Pokemon and a generally blanket approach to fixing Gen 1's glitches, the game balance is a lot more satisfying in this generation. The addition of Kanto is so unnecessary and yet these games have it anyway as a unique post game and a fun little victory lap to take your team of all conquering monsters for a quick sightseeing adventure through familiar locations. It doesn't need to be here but I'm so glad that it is. Gen 2 had so much to do and yet was able to reinforce Pokemon as a franchise so successfully that it is rarely looked back since. If the wild area was comfortably the best part of Sword and Shield, then a game that capitalises on that and does everything in its power to instil a sense of exploration into this franchise via, say, an open world, would be a pretty groovy time. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are perhaps too newly released to judge them without enough time to let my opinion stew and develop extra flavour and have some dumplings added to it, but my first impressions have told me that in general these games are moving Pokemon in an exciting new direction. Pokemon should have been truly open world as soon as possible and now that we're finally here, these games excel so hard at that feeling of being lost and finding your own way through the environment. One that is now littered with Pokemon to catch and objectives to complete. I have two major complaints, the obvious one being that these games are horrifically optimised and struggle from consistent frame drops at best and some pretty devastating glitches at worst. There are truly great games in here somewhere, but it can sometimes be very hard to find them when stuff like this is happening. The other, more minor issue is that there's no level scaling, so I found it hard to complete the three main story paths in an order that means I'm not over or under leveled at any point. It made for some good challenges at times, but also a few too many steamrolls for my liking. I remember saying it was Sonic Frontiers, and I'll say it with Pokemon, don't worry so much about this game, it's the next one that you can look forward to. You'd like to think that they'd make improvements. The top three may well turn into a top four if Scarlet and Violet gets his act together, but for my money, these are the closest we have to flawless generations of Pokemon. And if you've been keeping up at home, you'll know that they're all right next door to each other. When people talk of the peak of Pokemon, this is the 10 year period that they're alluding to. And when Ruby and Sapphire came out, it acted as a bit of a reset for Pokemon. On new hardware, they weren't backwards compatible with previous generations, which I remember being a sticking point with me for a while, but it allowed Gen 3 to move so far beyond the game play of older titles and revolutionize Pokemon in a big way. We've got abilities now so that you're catching new mons for more than just their stats and type combo, there's two villainous teams going at it and they're hard at work fucking up the world, you've got double battles and weather hazards and you've got both parents in the game and e-reader functionality that was never used properly. It's a huge step in the right direction for Pokemon and I appreciate that Game Freak were bold enough to do this with enough conviction that they stuck the landing so perfectly. It's the giant leap that this franchise sorely needed and executed without lots of glitches. Like these ones. And if Gen 3 was a step forward that took Pokemon to thrilling new places, then Gen 4 was actually really slow and boring. Yeah, the movement speed is lethargic and the battle system has this horrible delay to it after inputs and then the HP goes down at a snail's piece and I'm sorry but I have a life to live, Game Freak. Do you mind getting on of it a bit quicker, please? 
Never fear, friendos, because Gen 4 may have gotten off to a shaky start, but as soon as Platinum came in and basically improved every tiny shitty problem that Diamond and Pearl had, this generation of Pokemon ascended to somewhere amazing. Platinum is basically some of the best Pokemon you can ever hope to play as a refined version of this generation, and now that it's not super slow, you can appreciate how wonderful Gen 4 is, with the physical special split on attacks and online trading, and honest to goodness, one of the most varied and enjoyable regions to explore. There's probably no coincidence that the villainous teams are actually threatening in the generations that came out in this time, and Team Galactic actually want to kind of break the universe and blow up the landscape. These aren't criminals anymore, they're insane nihilistic terrorists. That's just what Pokemon needed. So Gen 5 is kind of cheating, because with it we have two separate pairs of games that each do their own thing incredibly well. I've been skirting around the third game in every generation, mainly because later generations don't have one, but the fifth generation chose to have another set of dual releases in black and white too, which are more like sequels than the definitive version of anything. That makes Gen 5 the only generation with two distinct video games in it, but it's the quality of these games rather than the quantity that raises this generation up to such heady heights. As the last, mostly, 2D mainline games in the franchise, you can tell that Game Freak reached the peak of their powers in a lot of areas here, with a smooth presentation that features vibrant Pokemon sprites, and since Game Freak de-emphasized old Pokemon until you complete the game, you're more likely to fill your team with some of the awesome new Pokemon. The soundtrack slaps incredibly hard, and the story is shockingly complex for a Pokemon game, featuring mature themes and moments of very real peril for the protagonist. Team Plasma are simultaneously horrible people who manipulate everyone around them and kind of have a sympathetic goal, at least at the start? Black and White 2 don't add anything too drastic to the mix, but they are a proper sequel story-wise, and it repurposes existing characters to do some really inventive things. Mechanically, I can see something like Scarlet and Violet or Future Project surpassing Gen 5 eventually, but as the complete package, it's gonna take a lot to beat this. Sooner rather than later, please. So yeah, that was every Pokemon generation from worst to best. Do you agree with me or is there a different generation that you'd have on top? Let me know in a comment down below and be sure to like the video and subscribe for more in the future and hit that bell for notifications of every new video. If you need something else to watch right now, I ranked every Mario Kart game last week and I also want to thank my top supporters on Patreon, including Rainer Bane of Bobana, Ryan Down and Blue Caterade. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.